This is the Mars 5 Ultra. And there's two versions, the Mars 5 and the Mars 5 Ultra. I'm currently reviewing the Mars 5 Ultra. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about pricing. Well, the Mars 5 Ultra is $269.99 and the Mars 5 is $179.99. And that is pre-order. If you are looking to purchase this, links will be provided below in the description. Just like always, all my reviews are the out-of-box experience. Now let's go over some of the features of the Mars 5 Ultra. The Mars 5 Ultra has a build volume of 153.36 by 77.76 by 165 on the Z. The Mars 5 Ultra is a 7-inch mono LCD. It's 9K and it has a resolution of 8520 by 4320. It also has automatic bed leveling. No leveling needed for this. The printer also does a series of self-tests and it has mechanical sensor alarm. It has an AI smart camera. Now it's supposed to actually detect empty build plates and model warps. We will test that, trust me. Camera can be also used for monitoring and time lapse. It has Wi-Fi, temperature detection, and that tilt release technology to enable fast printing. Now the Mars 5 Ultra has a standard pull-off lid. The vat's held on with two thumb screws and it has two pour spouts. Let's remove the protective film on the back. Now let's go ahead and remove the protective film on the LCD as well. Sorry to notice a pattern here. Yeah, Saturn 4 pattern. Latch is the same. Now let's remove the film off the build plate. Yep, everything is looking very similar to another printer I just reviewed. I notice that there's like no compression on this though, unlike the Saturn IV Ultra. Well, just go ahead and lock it in place. On the side, we're going to mount our little Wi-Fi antenna. You simply just go ahead and screw it on and just let it go. Well seems to have some performance anxiety here or something. How about we uh, pop a couple of Viagra? Or maybe it's just a fidget thing. I don't know. So plug in your DC, plug in your uh, USB stick, and you can take the cover off your little AI camera if you so choose. If you're not using it and for storage, just put it back on. Now the Mars 5 Ultra is basically a mini-me of the Saturn for Ultra. Come mini me! Let's do a quick comparison. For the Mars 5 Ultra, you lift the lid up and there is a access port on that lid. For the Saturn 4 Ultra, you tilt the lid up and there's an access port on the back of the machine. Both have identical uh, vats. Held down by two thumb screws, has two pore spouts, and it's just bigger than the other, of course. I can definitely fit this right inside. And they both use that tilt release technology. Both have the nice solid release for the build plate on the top. Both are laser etched build surfaces. And I had absolutely zero issues with bed adhesion with the Saturn IV Ultra. And we'll get into what my experiences were like with the Mars 5 Ultra. I did notice something that you have a little bit of a spring action for the Saturn IV Ultra, but absolutely none with the Mars 5. It's rigid mounted. I don't know what the reason behind it is or even why there's springs there. But I did notice that again the both surfaces felt the same and cleaning will definitely be kind of a pain to get paper towels in there. Just try to drain as much as possible. The latching system for this definitely has that nice satisfying feeling that's nice and secure. Both the Saturn IV Ultra and the Mars 5 Ultra have the same interface with the same menus, so no difference there. Both have the AI camera, one's affixed to the back of the machine for the Saturn IV Ultra, the other one for the Mars 5 is right there on the base. You'll notice that there's only one linear rail for the Mars 5 Ultra and two for the Saturn IV Ultra. I think it's just not needed. Neither vat is heated, but there is a space behind there for possibly filtration. So we'll see what accessories they come out with. 
since I'm in a non-heated garage, I like to have a vatted heater. Now the ports are basically identical. It's just how they're laid out. You can see that they're the same. I did prop my antenna up a little bit. Now I've always wanted to try clear resin and this water wash bowl, Jing He Green Clear is definitely looking tempting. Load up Chichu box and let's start testing this. And I really like the look of this green resin by Jim He. Now, please pay attention to that max fill line. Definitely do not want to exceed this. I'm actually going a little bit below because the bed does tilt and you don't want spillage into your machine. There's no seals around there, so it will definitely pour in. And here's that tilt mechanism in action. That worked really good for the Saturn IV Ultra. Okay, I did set time lapses for each one of my prints, so we'll see how that looks in a little bit. So let's go ahead and put the cover on and get this printer going. Again, the display is identical to the one on the Saturn IV Ultra. It's vibrant, gives you enough information when you're printing, tells you what the machine is doing and how much time is left. Very easy, first time setup, and it does a calibration before every print. You know what else makes things easy? Today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services, such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. I would like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring today's video of the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra. As mentioned earlier in the video under its features that you can do time lapses as well as monitor the printer remotely by the camera. Also the camera has AI functionality. And what is that AI functionality? Well it says right on the website, say goodbye to costly failures and wasted time as the AI camera detects errors in real time guiding you to flawless results. Never worry about empty build plate or model warping again. It's a thing of the past. The AI camera monitors every step, instantly alerting you of any errors for immediate resolution. As I was reading that off screen, that just came up. So we'll be talking about this a little bit later on at the end of the video. But you can see that it does some really nice time lapses. So, I mean, this is mostly for content creators and stuff and it does add a kind of a cool effect so let's go ahead and see how the prints actually came out shall we now in my review of the Saturn 4 Ultra I totally missed the drip tray it was an unmarked box it looked like it was just a filler piece so yes it does come with a drip tray and I would suggest using it for any time that you're removing a print now, I am still a rookie when it comes to resin printing. I definitely wear PPE, I wear gloves, and I try to keep cross-contamination down to a minimum. And I also wear eye protection as well as um, a mask. I just don't want any of this uh, resin getting into my eyes or possibly my mouth. It's not like I plan on eating it or anything, but spillage happens and cross-contamination happens as well. I try to wiggle it a little bit and um, know just a little bit just to try to get as much excess resin off wow that Jing he clear green resin does look pretty darn sharp now this little trophy was made by offset maker lab it's for murph and um it's for the death racer competition offset maker lab is a great set of people and we always have a good time when they're around and you could catch them at almost every rep rep festival in the u.s now this Jing He filament is really nice. It's green, it's vibrant, but unfortunately after it's washed and cured, it's gonna become pretty darn dull. And there's a remedy for that. It's actually after it's washed and cured, we're gonna to have to spray some clear coat on it. But a high quality clear coat matters. This UV resistant clear is good, but it's not the greatest. You're gonna want most likely like a 2K clear and with a better hardener, but as you can see, they definitely came out a lot better than what it was like before when it was dull. I did about four coats on them. 
Now I printed several of these because I actually wanted to do more than one. Uh, this is the one with the Murph logo in the back. There's still some supports I set to break off in the back, but it's no big deal. I did wind up breaking it around the R there. So it's very delicate and I did not throw this in the wash and cure station because it was going to uh, collide and most likely break them. Next is a Gambit Bust by Wicked. This came out really nice. This is Gem Key. 10k just gray resin filament and you can see all the nice detail now i did put this in the wash and cure station and i after it was dried i uh sprayed it with some clear as well i do like the the glossiness of a clear i think it brings the model back to life now i decided to print out another bust and this is actually with the elegu low odor resin and you can see it doesn't quite have as much detail. Now, I really am not a fan of the odor that comes with filament, and um, I figured I would give this a try. It's plant-based. And just like the Saturn IV Ultra video, I decided to print out the Lushman Studio Werewolf. And again, it has great detail. I actually sprayed a little too much clear on there, and it was really hot and it dried too quickly. So you definitely want to be in more of a controlled environment if you spray clear. But you can see that the detail is there. It just looks like it's just very, very wet. Now I did print out several of these. And one of them, you can see the tongue there. Um, something happened. I don't know what it was, but the tongue is definitely deformed a little. So let's do a side by side. Yeah. Um, it's like the teeth and the lower jaw and tongue there is all combined so definitely a little bit of a failure there but overall the rest of the models look really good now this should just be called the saturn for ultra mini i mean it has all the same features and just like what i said at the beginning of the video i review what i receive and i was kind of expecting it to be smooth sailing like the saturn for ultra however i had more failures than successful prints on this. Now this only happened once where the interface said it was at 1% and clearly it was almost done. And I tried to click on it, the screen, and it was just unresponsive. Now I know this is a new machine and it actually received two over the air updates. And I really thought that that may have actually fixed the problem, but it did not. I was getting a ton of failures on this machine. And I was pretty disappointed because the Saturn IV Ultra was just seamless. Everything just printed perfectly for the most part. And I was thinking, well, the AI camera should have been detecting these failures. I mean, it says that it should, and that didn't happen either. I mean, the time lapses were running. You could see that I was getting these warped parts. Bed adhesion was an absolute issue. And I was making sure that that build surface was absolutely spotless. I even tried adjusting the exposure settings for my first layer, and that did not help either. I mean, anything from warped prints to some prints that didn't have anything to two complete empty prints. And again, the AI should have caught this. Now, the box didn't arrive in the best shape. Let's just say that. So I think this may have been a shipping issue. It fell off a truck. Uh, you know, a truck truck. Now, I have been in contact with Elu, and they're actually going to just send me a replacement machine. I mean, let's be honest. There's just way too many problems, and I basically reviewed the same printer just two months ago. And I had practically no issues at all. Now, I would suggest that you review content from other channels and do not take my experience as the standard. I would suggest Uncle Jesse, Bogmon, Fohammer, and Loyal Moses. See what print results they had. See if they had any issues. So, I haven't reviewed any of their content because I try not to let their content judge what I review. So, if you are looking to purchase it, there is affiliate link down below if you so choose to. I know it's not the video that you expected. Well, I didn't expect it either. But if you follow me on the socials once I receive the replacement machine, I'll be sure to keep you updated. So I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you again on Tripod's Garage.